Hi YouTube, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to look at two options for emulating a Nintendo 64, both of which will allow you to increase resolution up to 1440p or even 4K, both of which are relatively user friendly, but as we see when we get to a side by side comparison, offer slightly different results. Before we do that, a quick plug. We publish guides to emulation weekly on this channel, so please do consider subscribing. And as well as emulation, we also do new PC build and old component PC builds, so do think about sticking around for those as well. Okay, let's get on with it. Now as ever, you will of course need some games. And if you've been to this channel before, you know I can't tell you where to find those games on a YouTube channel. There will be my normal, very helpful guide on my website a day or two after we post a video, which has some very helpful written instructions on how to do this and some additional resources. Anyway, here are my games. As you can see, they're .n64 format. They are unzipped, so if you do download a zip file, you must extract it before you do that. Although the N64 wasn't the most popular of consoles, there are some great games on it. And I think as we'll see, certainly worth having a look at. So our first option of emulation is Project 64. I'll leave a link in the description below to the website. It's worth noting here that particular warning. All downloads from the internet come with some risk, and I can't protect you from all of them, so you do listen at your own discretion. But this, is a, this, I believe, is a relatively safe link at this time. So once we've downloaded that, we'll just open it up as a setup file. Don't save this to the destination file indicated by the setup guide. Save it somewhere else in your system. If you save it to a program file, you'll find it impossible to write back config changes, which I found to my cost a number of times before I really figured out what was going on with this. So select a different drive, run the emulation through setup, and that's it. It's really quick to do. So we'll have a look at some configurations first. First of all, we need to tell the emulator where our ROMs are. So we'll just take that through to where I've got mine, and mine are on my desktop, as you saw. And then it will just pop up all the games you've got in your folder and give you a rough idea of any that have got any issues. So that's all very straightforward. Now configuring controllers. Now I'm using a Bluetooth Xbox One controller and they can be a bit problematic on the default plugin. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below to an additional site where you can download a different plugin, an older version ironically, um, which would allow you to play with a Bluetooth controller. Do try out the initial one first, but I had problems so I'm using this as my solution. It's good to know it's there. So we just download that, unzip the file, and then we'll just extract that DLL file and place that into our Project 64 folder. Just a simple copy and paste into the plugins folder. There you go, next to the built in one. Okay, now that's done, we should go back to configuring our controller. First of all, we need to select that plugin now, which we've done, the old version, then we can configure our controller. Now, you know the N64 controller had a, an odd layout, so map the buttons as usually fit. As you can see, what I'm doing here, I'm mapping AB and X to Z, my trigger controllers, start and select, etc. So, analog to left, my right analog stick I'm using as a C pad, and mapping the D pad to the D pad. But play around with it, find which one you prefer. You might want a slightly different button configuration depending on what controller you're using. Once that's done, we'll just save it down. And we're ready to rock and roll. There is a catch with Project 64. That is after a few startups, it comes up with this little folder here, which just asks you to wait. Well, what it asks you to do is consider contributing so you don't have to wait. But otherwise, if you don't want to contribute, you'll have to wait. 30 seconds, I mean, it's up to you. I don't find it a huge inconvenience to do, but if it really irritates you, then maybe RetroArch is a solution for you. But, but there you go, just so you're aware. So let's start up Diddy Kong Racing and have a look at what we can do with the resolution. <laughs> so we'll just change that to 1440p. Now the system seems to have picked up. I've got a a 2K QHD monitor with my output's 1440p. 
so I'll just select it as the highest one. And there we are. So that was straightforward enough. So now we'll just flick that back onto widescreen. So that's a case of going down to the option here, selecting widescreen on the plugin, and also going down to configuration and overriding on the settings there on advanced. Over overwriting there a default aspect ratio. Select 1440p, widescreen this time, and there we go. Here it looks in widescreen. Looks pretty decent, not out of proportion really. I know it was a 4x3 display, but it's up to you whether you want to emulate that or not. Okay, so now we'll flip over to RetroArch. Now I've done a full RetroArch setup guide for PlayStation, so this follows a very similar format, so do check out that video. So first of all, core downloader. We're going to download our core. And under Nintendo 64, we'll be using the Moopin 64 Plus Next. Once that's done, we'll go back. And then we'll just now we'll just import our content. So scan directory, so we'll just plop through again to where I've saved my files on the desktop. There we go, N64, scan its directory. All done. Okay, now we can get playing some games. Now of course RetroArch has a default Xbox mapping. Again, you might want to change that. That's down to you. So we'll just start up the same game. So run, select the core, run again, and that's now mapped to that game as the core you want to use. So just fast forward to start up now. So in terms of changing settings then, you need to use your shortcut to get into the settings menu, which I've set previously to L3 and R3. So first and foremost, we go into options and we can change the resolution. This is the, multi this is the core change. Now you can make this up to anything up to 4K, really up to you. And as you can see, you can have a 4 by 3 resolution or a 16.9 and change the aspect ratio there as well. So we'll just set that for now. And then we'll just make a few other subtle changes, which are down to you. I do advise you play around with these a little bit and see what you like and what you don't. Um, but you don't have to do these. The core change really is changing that resolution. So down to bilinear filtering and change that to three points. Now we'll just pop down to MSSA level and change that to 16. FXAA will just set to 1. Let's go down to text filtering. Text filter, that's it, that's smooth one. Again, you can play around with this. Texture enhancement, we'll just set to times two. And I think that will probably do us. Here we go. Now, of course, you're only getting 1440p as captured by 1080p on ABS. It looks pretty smooth. So I go back to option now, just change that back to 640 by 480 so you can perhaps see the difference. Now it looks a bit more, it looks a bit blockier to me. Um, just to demonstrate that a little better. What we'll do is just do a quick side by side comparison. So here we have standard resolution on the left and 1440p on the right. I think you can see it's a bit sharper. Not massively, but certainly a bit sharper. Okay. So finally then, we'll just restart that, just in 16 by nine. And again, you can see the resolution looks proportionate, not out of place, just down to you whether you want to go for widescreen or emulating the original four x three format. So a bit of side-by-side -side comparison, I thought would be quite useful here. So on the left-hand side, we have RetroArch. On the right-hand side, Project 64. Mario Kart's my default game for all Nintendo emulation. I think overall RetroArch was a bit sharper. To my eyes on this particular comparison, on the left it's just a little bit brighter. Not a massive difference I think with this particular game. Both play really well, really smoothly, um, and certainly the enhancements do make it look a little bit sharper. So then 007 Goldeneye. Now I think you can see a slightly marked difference here. Sharpness on the gun, pretty similar. But I think the backgrounds and the floor there, you can see far more detail in the RetroArch version than we get on Project 64.
Not that either of them make me any good at the game, but there we are. So moving on then, we'll look at Sky Fox. Again, you can see quite a marked difference in the colour there. Now, this could be a preference thing. I do prefer the Retro Arch version. It's a bit brighter and a bit lighter. But in terms of accuracy, without having a Nintendo 64 in front of me, I couldn't tell you which one was actually more accurate. But, but both play really well. I mean, it's a case of whatever you prefer. I think as we go through this, I would just say Project 64 is a bit easier to set up. Retro Arch, I always find a little cumbersome. Wave Race 64. Not many differences on this at all. Again, the slightly more turquoisey scene with the Retro Arch version. I think the colour definition, to my eye, my preference is the Retro Arch rendering, but you may have a different view. In terms of gameplay, no different. As I was saying earlier, I think Project 64 as a standalone emulator is a bit easier to just configure. Um, Retro Arch provides a couple more options. So on Super Smash Bros, I really did see quite a difference between two emulators. As we get into gameplay, you see as, as Yoshi swallows up Link, then no egg comes out on the Project 64 version, but it does accurately re up. So that's a bit of an odd one. I'm not sure, quite sure why that happens. It obviously just demonstrates there's a bit of a difference. In summary then, I think both emulators work quite well. Project 64 is the easier one to set up. Although I think RetroArch does look slightly nicer. Of the two, I'd probably favour RetroArch for, for those slightly better graphics. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below which one you prefer. If you've used either, let me know if there's anything else I've missed. As we said earlier, this is a weekly series on this channel, so please do consider subscribing. And I hope to see you again soon. Until the next one, go well.